All right. In this video, we're going to get into something a little more complicated, um, a little more advanced in Wix, and that's the content manager. The content manager is essentially a giant spreadsheet that can be used to dynamically create pages and and category pages for information. So, for example, say you're a home remodeler and you have a hundred different projects that you've done and you want to display those, you can use the content manager to create a hundred identical layout layout pages with with customized information for each project, say the date of the project and some I guess some gallery images and a cover image. And it would also create a main page, a directory of all those pages, so that people could easily scroll through those. And let me show you a few examples of that. Here's two sites I built that are currently using the content manager to manage their portfolio of projects or properties. So KW is a general contractor in Houston, Texas. And so that we've set up the content manager on this page to display a lot, a lot of their projects. And so this is actually an image that we set in this spreadsheet that I'm about to show you. The title is, is set in that spreadsheet and it's linked to this portfolio page with a gallery, with a title, and that's pretty much it. And each one of these pages looks identical and is identical. It's using the same layout that's all pulling from the content manager. And if this is a little confusing, it'll, it'll make some more sense in a bit. Okay, here's another example. JSPI Properties, they rent properties in uh, West Texas. And here you can see they have listings of homes for rent. You can see the address, the beds, the bath, square footage, the uh, price per month. And if you click into these, you can see more information about that particular property. You can see a little gallery. You can see a property description if they have one, contact, property details, property location. And now let me show you what that looks like in the actual content manager in the back end of Wix. So here's the back end content manager for KW General Contractors. This one's pretty simple. We just have a few fields. And remember, this is just a spreadsheet, right? Nothing you haven't seen before, probably. And so you have a project names column, a project image, which is the main cover image that we use on the directory page. And then we have the gallery of their different pictures of the project. And then here's one that's a little more complicated. And this one is JSPI Investment Properties. And here you can see we have a title of the property, the number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, the address, the property type, house, duplex, like that, the cover image, a description, if there is one, uh, the price, the square footage, gallery. So these can be pretty complicated, right? You can make these pretty extensive if you want to, but they don't have to be. So I think hopefully you can see from these two examples why having a content manager is useful if you have a lot of information that's repetitive that you'll need to display in some way. Some other examples might be if you have a lot of galleries because you're a photographer or you're any kind of designer or creative and you have a large portfolio you want to display, the content manager might be your best bet. So for our purposes, we're creating a travel blog. So let's use the content manager to create a group of five to 10 identical pages we can use to display some travel photography. So then we could have a photography page for all these different countries that this travel photographer might be going to. So we might have some, a page for pictures from Korea and it's a bunch of pictures from Korea and we have the date, the date range that they were in Korea for. Okay, let's get started. In the left hand side under the plus, we're gonna click Content Manager and get to the screen and we're gonna click Add to Site. And so this is gonna create two pages for us. It's gonna be the main directory page and then the custom page that shows each item in your spreadsheet, each piece of that database. So let's use the, let's use this portfolio preset just to make it a little bit easier on ourselves. We're going to click Add to Site. Okay, so it's created a template content manager database for us. So we have the title of the portfolio piece, the description, the year, the gallery, and then the main project image. We also have a client name. So we're going to rework this a little bit. We're going to customize this for a travel photographer. So we can have, instead of the title, we, let's rename this country name. 
we can keep it the description and maybe we'll make this year visited. We'll have a gallery, a main product image. We'll remove the client name. Delete. Okay. Now let's put in some country names. Now we've got all our country names in here. Let's also add a field so you can see how that works. So if we scroll over to the end of the spreadsheet, the database, you can click the plus sign and you can add a field. There's a few different kinds of fields that we could create. A simple text one, simple text field, an image field, like the main project image, a boolean, which is a yes or a no, so a checkbox sort of, a number, a date and time, just the time, rich text, which is text that can be designed with bold, bolding and italics and that kind of thing, links, documents, so like a PDF download, video, um, a video, music, a location, tags, media gallery, some coding functions. So let's create a new field called country location, and we'll use that map field type, the address field type. And then these can be relocated and they can be reordered. The fields can be reordered if that makes it easier for you. So now we have the country name. And then we can put in the country location too. And let's create a map that we can add to our website, help people out with their geographic knowledge. And so now I'm going to go ahead and customize this spreadsheet so that you can see what this is going to look like on the front end. So I'm going to probably fast forward to this part and we will reconvene in a second. Okay, now our content manager database has been completely filled out with the country name, the country location, a description, the year visited, the gallery, and the main project image. And let's name this main country image. Let's actually rename this from portfolio to travel photography. Save that. And so to rename it, I just clicked the three dots and I clicked edit settings. By the way, you can also import items or export from a CSV. So if you have a actual spreadsheet with some uh, similar content, similar information, you could upload that here. And you just need to make a spreadsheet with these same column headings. Okay, so now let's publish this. If you hover over this, you'll see that we need to actually publish our website to see this information live. So let's do that now. Let's X out of this. It's going to auto-save, so don't worry. And then we're going to click Publish. And let's view the site. If you click Portfolio, this is the directory for all of that information that we just set up. So you can see that each line has its own item. China, Colombia, Morocco. And then if we click in to one of these, we can see that main cover image, the title, and then some of the images. So this works, our information has been added, and we have this directory that's been created with these directory pages, but obviously we don't have a client, the year date is missing, um, the layout's kind of messed up. So now let's work on the actual layout of our pages and how everything connects on the page to the content manager. Okay, in this video we're actually going to design and layout our pages that are being created from the content manager. We're going to connect some of those fields from that spreadsheet, that database in the content manager to these pages. And generally we'll finish these pages that have been created by the content manager. So starting on our home screen, in the front end Wix editor, we can click page up here and scroll down in this listing to portfolio all or portfolio title. So let's click on portfolio all and this is our main directory page that will have all of our listings from our database. 
So you'll see a couple interesting things here. One, you have this little hovering thing. This isn't going to show up on the front end. This isn't going to show up on the actual design of the website. But this is a quick link to manage our content in the Content Manager, which can also be found right here. And then if you hover over some of these elements, you now you'll see this little squiggly line. So this is your data set connector. When you click this, you can connect different elements to the data in your Content Manager spreadsheet in your database. So if we click the Wix Pro Gallery, this gallery right here, and we click Connect to Data, we can see that the data set is the portfolio. That's, that's the spreadsheet. It's the name of the spreadsheet we're working on. We can see that the image source for the Wix Pro Gallery is connected to the main country image, that field in that spreadsheet. The titles connect to the country name, which is also in that spreadsheet. The descriptions are connected to, and now we can actually connect this ourselves. So descriptions connect to. We can click here, or we can click the arrow, and select where this, um, where this field is connected to. So let's add it to description text. We have short descriptions, remember, for each of our countries. And so now everything's connected. These could all be switched, um, but they'll only, Wix will only allow you to connect to fields that match the field in the designer. So for example, in this gallery, the, we need a single image source for each picture in the gallery. Obviously, we couldn't connect that to um, the full gallery in the spreadsheet in our database. We couldn't connect it to the text. We need a single image. And the only field in our database that's a single image is the main country image field. So um, we'll click that, and the links connect to the portfolio title. And portfolio title, when it's in parentheses title like that, that means it's the specific page that's created for each line, each row in the database. Okay, so just stick with me. If it's a little confusing, uh, just take a stick with it, and it'll all make sense after you practice a little bit on, on your own and you walk through this a couple times. I also recommend if you're a little confused, just watch the video again, and you'll start to get it. Okay, so we can customize the layout of these different items a little bit. We already have it set to stretch. Let's also click on Settings, Layout, and we can affect the look of the actual layout. So for me, the items are really spaced out. I don't think we need nearly this much space. So I'm gonna to go to layout, customize layout, and reduce the spacing to like, let's see what 50 looks like. That's a little tighter, it looks a little better to me. Okay. And let's change the strip background to something more interesting. Maybe just a flat color for now. Just a gray. And we'll switch this to be white. And let's get rid of this extra strip here and tighten up the spacing. Okay, so now we have the basic portfolio directory page, and now let's customize our actual portfolio pages for each one of our travel locations. So this is the main image the main country image that we set in our database. Let's make this a little smaller. Stretch it so everything stretches with it. We don't have a client, so remember we're going to get rid of this. And then we have these two fields, year, which is a static field. It's not connected to a data set. And this is the actual, um, this is the actual field that's connected to a data set, our data set. So we'll click here. We deleted the year visited field, and we replaced it with the year visited for a number field. So we'll replace that, and we'll see now the correct data could being pulled in, 2017 for China. And we'll just name the static field you're visited. Let's move our description text to be in line with this information. And then let's make this whole bit smaller. And then if we scroll down, we can see the gallery images that are that we added in our data set. So if we click manage media, this is just the static. These aren't the actual images that'll show them. These are just static placeholders. You'll see if we actually preview the site, we'll see the correct images. And similar to that front page directory, I think the spacing's weird, so I'm gonna fix that. Okay, let's check that out. Yeah, that's better. We have these previous and next buttons that are linked to the 
next previous and next uh, item in our data set. So if you click connect the data, we'll see it's connected to the data set portfolio. And it click click action. So clicking the button connects to the previous dynamic page. These are all dynamic pages. They're dynamic because they change. It's a layout that changes based on the information in the data set. Remember, our data set just a big spreadsheet. So remember we have a field for address, so let's add a map that shows where in the world this place is on a map. We'll make it a little easier for our visitors. So let's get rid of this extra space. So in this strip, let's add another column to give ourselves some more space to add a map. So we'll click there and we'll get rid of the duplicate information. And re-space all of this. Then we're going to add an, a map to this column. So if we click plus, under contact and forms, we can add a full width map or just a map widget, a little map square. Let's add that. And we're going to make it fit within the column so nothing gets chopped off. Remember, it needs to hover. When you hover over, it needs to say, turn blue and say, attach the column. And so now it's in that column. And then we can connect it to the data set. So if we connect to the data set, click that squiggly line. It's to connect to the right spreadsheet, the right database. And then the location connects to the country location. So now it's uh, added to China. And now let's just do one little thing. Let's zoom out quite a bit so we can see where in the world that is. Something like that. Okay. So our custom pages for our photo galleries, for our travel photography are not complete. Let's go into the menu real quick, manage menu, and rename the portfolio for travel photography. And then let's add all of our new pages. So dynamic pages. We've got China, dynamic pages. And I'll add in all these, I'll fast forward and then I'll add them to the menu. Okay, now our menu is created with all of our sub-menu items and our main uh, data set page. Let's preview the site and check out how everything came together. So we can click Photography. This will take us to that main page with each one of our travel photography locations and if we click in all of our pictures will be there remember we didn't do anything specifically to Sweden page right we weren't we customizing the China page but you can see that the title is right the main image is right the location on the map of Sweden is correct the year is correct description our gallery images so all we have to do is customize one page's layout it affects the look of all of the pages in the content manager. So hopefully you can see how powerful this is and how useful it would be if you have a lot of information to display, like a lot of locations. If you've been to 190 countries, you don't want to create 190 separate pages. You would use the content manager to show off those images. Okay, so that's the content manager in a nutshell. I know it's a complicated topic. It, it can be a little confusing. I would recommend just practicing with it, trying to set it up yourself. And if you need help, I'm here to help. Just leave a comment and we can discuss it further. All right. Thank you.